custom Android ROMs. It's been a little bit since I've actually tackled this, probably about 10 years since I was like, you know what, let's try this out. It's been a while and I wanted to see what the state of a custom Android ROM is because most people know Lineage OS or Graphene OS or Calyx OS, which are all privacy security focused or minimal designs, which are good. But I wanted to go like full blown, let's get on XDA, download just something freaking cool. And this is Rising OS. I really like it. It's been a lot of fun. You kind of see it in the background here. This is my phone. I, I just am casting the screen so you can see it uh, on here. So that's how I'm casting. I'm just using SERCPY to mirror my screen. But you'll notice a couple things. Up here at the top, you see this line. Very, very cool. That shows me the battery and how much it's being charged. Now, if I actually power off my phone, look at the start screen. It's really neat. It gives you an entire charging slowly, the percentage, the milliamps, how long it's going to take, all that. And actually the, the temperature of the phone itself. And when I look at it, unlocked by face, this is a Google 6A. There's no face unlock. And yet there is with this ROM. So I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, a lot of the aesthetic is stolen from Nothing OS. Nothing OS is a, a good phone, but a little bit too pricey for my taste, where this is a $250 phone a couple years ago when I bought it. So a very, very cheap uh, Pixel phone. And I wanted to just kind of pimp it out. Now, a lot of the icon set up here, You'll see I changed out the penguin and then I added a, like a Wi-Fi 6. So if I'm on a Wi-Fi network, it'll show what type of Wi-Fi I am. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm on Wi-Fi 6E, I'm good or whatnot. And then the LTE. So I know I'm on LTE. If it was 5G, it would show 5G and then it shows uh, percentage and, and the rest of it. I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. And then this is part of Nothing Launcher right here. This actually shows each one. So the cool thing is if I click on this one right here, it'll actually pull that up. So this shows all six, but if I want to just click on X and to launch into this, I can do that. So as far as loading this up, what's entailed in a custom ROM in 2024? I was kind of curious about this. It's not bad as long as you have an unlocked phone. And most people are stuck in like, contracts or they'll buy like Samsung phones with lock bootloaders. There's no way to unlock those easily. Uh, luckily with the Google Pixel line of phones, it's really simple. All I did was uh, grab these files off the of SourceForge. Uh, the, the actual ROM itself to load it on here, you just have to go OEM unlock from your dev tools. Let me show that in the settings menu. OEM unlocking and you'll see it down here at the bottom. Let me scroll up a little bit. OEM unlocking, allow the bootloader to be unlocked. So you have to tick this from developer options. If you don't have developer options, just open up your phone, hit about seven times, and then developer options get unlocked. It's also how I'm mirroring the screen directly onto here so you can see everything I'm doing on my phone as I do it. For unlocking the bootloader after the OEM unlock in developer options, you still have to do a fast boot flashing unlock. And if you're not on stock Android, I really would not recommend relocking this. I know that's going to rub some people with unlock because if you have your bootloader unlocked, you're not going to be able to use GPay. So if you're a big GPay user, custom ROMs kind of out for you. But after that unlocked and you download all these, which here's the latest ones, you can see not very many downloads per week. We're looking at a total of about 100 downloads uh, a week probably about 20 or 30. So not seldomly used. Very few people probably do this anymore. But after unlocking it, all you do is these three flashes with fast boot. And if you do have like a waiting for device and you're on Windows, you will need to download the USB Windows driver. I put a link here for everything. Uh, I couldn't find all this information. It's kind of scattered amongst XDA just because it's not very popular anymore. Uh, so I tried to kind of culminate all these things into one article post. Now, after that's done, you boot into recovery. In recovery on the phone itself, you first have to set, say apply ADB, and then you can do an ADB sideload of the ROM. So you've redone the bootloader doing that, and then you sideload the ROM, and then you reboot after uh, wiping your device and setting to factory settings. And then you have rising OS, as, as you saw here. The big things I showed was the audio visual updates. I'd love a lot of the new audio effects, like the locking, unlocking sounds like just a little tick. 
and uh, the adaptive sound engine. I don't know about all that. I, don't, I, I haven't really messed with it too much. I did like a lot of the integrations of Nothing OS into it. The face unlock was a big win. I really like the face unlock compared to the fingerprint much faster. And I actually had my wife test this out. I grabbed, gave her the phone. I'm like, try to unlock my phone with your face just to see if it was a, a gimmick or if it actually showed my face. And sure enough, it, it, it didn't work for her and it does work for me. So face unlock does work. I was like, that's kind of crazy. A $200 phone has face unlock. Take that Apple users. And then for the UI customizations, uh, I did change like the icon sets here. And if you look at the app drawer here, you can see uh, all of them are kind of changed. I, I like the big icons just because, I don't know, uh, I like that. I know my daughter always makes fun of me. If I show you my text messages, you'd be like, oh my God, that font is huge. Yeah, it's, I just don't use it very much for texting and other things. As far as memory management and pixel features and other stuff, uh, I don't know if the battery is that much better. It's probably equivalent to just taking stock Android and using the universal debloat tool that I showed in the past video uh, or the universal uh, Android debloat next generation. That's the new project. I ran that and I think that gives just as good a battery management and uh, gives a little bit more cleaner layout but you don't also have a lot of the cool features you have over here. So very comparable on battery to that. It's still a lot better than stock Android. As far as like its base, it was grabbing the Lineage OS, the Pixel Experience, and a few other things from other ROMs and just kind of combining them all into this one ROM package. Uh, the Rising OS team, all this was grabbed from XDA. I wouldn't trust this stuff. If you have like a very important job or you have real sensitive data on your phone, obviously don't use a custom ROM. <laughs> That's one of the things I would say. I mean, I'm just a YouTuber and I just like having fun with these things. So I don't mind loading up this custom ROM on here. I know not the most secure thing and that's totally okay with me. Again, uh, most of my stuff is not private and it's already out on the internet. So that's why I was kind of like, let's just see how fun some of these custom ROMs have gotten. I don't know, I'll probably stick on this one for a little bit and then try something else. As far as any cons or, or any negative experiences I've done since loading this up, uh, I was going to bike somewhere and I was loading up Google Maps. I had it momentarily drop on me. Now it could have been a signal in that specific area as it did come back and I was able to get it, but uh, it could also be the ROM too that was interfacing with Google Maps. Uh, not, not as good as maybe the stock experience, uh, but it did still work. It just uh, one thing I was like, ooh, better do an offline maps next time just so I don't have that drop in the middle of when I'm driving on the highway. As far as like the styling and other, you know, hotspot type features, most of that all works for me and, and it was able to reactivate with my carrier. So I didn't really have that many problems. It was kind of shocking how seamless most of this custom ROM stuff was. Uh, other than the initial getting over unlocking the bootloader, which was a little problematic. But once I got that, I could easily flash away. You can use Linux, you can use Windows. I think even Mac has some stuff that you could do this with. Uh, but having said that, what's the next custom ROM I should look at? Is there something that you think is cool? Obviously, there's the security privacy side of ROMs, and I've touched on Graphene OS and things like that. Uh, but I've I just really enjoy this. I, I, I like messing around with new things that are fun. And, you know, I, I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. I, I'm going to stay on it for a little bit, but I, I, I'm kind of back into the trying out different custom ROMs. It's still a fun endeavor in 2024. I don't know why I stopped doing it other than some of the base support from Google goes away, which... Frankly, if you're using like Calyx or Graphene, <laughs> all the Google stuff goes away. So I didn't mind that so much. And with that, let me know what I should try next and I'll see you in the next one.